content creation is just like growing. Mm -hmm. And so when people say that it's not a viable career, I just like completely disagree mm -hmm. because the job market is huge mm -hmm. and it's blowing up. Thank you guys for tuning in to the number one podcast in Houston. And we are now on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts. This movie that he was just in is going to be in Netflix in February of 2020. And you guys filmed it in 11 days. Yeah. That was so <laughs> crazy. And also then after I went on your Instagram, I was like, oh, he also is a photographer. Mm -hmm. And then also I saw in your bio, it says son of an immigrant. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's super cool. We have a lot of... Um, I've noticed, maybe this is something else we can touch on, but just like the drive that we as immigrants or kids of immigrants have is a lot different than <clears throat> people that didn't and like have to go through the struggles that we did to kind mm -hmm. of make something out of ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of like what's always in the back of my head. And I think like it drives me to do a lot better in everything that I do. Like it just drives me to work a lot harder, but also... I think the struggle there is like throughout my whole life wanting to be an artist has always been like a point of contention like we've always like fought about it as a family like I've always felt partly like a, a bit of guilt you know for wanting to do that because you know your parents come to this country and they want to give you a better life and it's so you can like really you know get a good job and make a lot of money and like go to college, go to college you know and do that like typical like life track and there's nothing wrong with that like a lot of people do that and they succeed and they do really well and and, and i respect that a lot but um you know some people just want different things out of life and like some people fall in love with the arts and they want to be an actor or dancer or singer or whatever and that's like so frowned upon because it doesn't seem like something you yeah. can really make a lot of money off of and that pressure is there from the culture of like you have to help your parents like pay bills mm -hmm. like you have to like support the family and I think to like detract from that, it, it kind of, it makes you feel guilty. You know, they guilt, it's, it's yeah. that guilt, you know, yeah. it's that, it's that generational guilt of like, you know, my mom came here and like, and I have two older siblings too that didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. My older brother is in the Marines and he's been in for like over 10 years now and he's gone to war. And so like, he didn't yeah. go to college and my older sister had a kid when she was really young and she didn't go to college either. So I was the first person in my whole family to ever have the opportunity to go to college and I decided to go to acting. They were so mad at me, you know, they were so mad because they were like, you know, you're the smart one in the family, like you're the one that has really good grades. Like I had the opportunity to go like to any state school in Houston or in, in Texas um, and like I, this, this school in, in Hollywood like caught my interest and I just like didn't know what i wanted to do you know because yeah. i really fell in love with acting when i was like i was like 15. um and it was kind of random like i just i was waiting in our school theater for my friend to audition for a play and like you know i needed a ride home i was like i just you know i'm just sitting here like waiting for my ride and i saw like everybody going up on stage and like doing their little thing and i guess i like made too much noise or something and like i moved around <laughs> in my seat and like the theater teacher like turned around and was like, what are you doing in here? And I was like, oh, I'm just here for my friend. I'm just waiting here. And he was like, well, you can't be here if you don't audition. And, like, and I was like, okay, well, I'll leave then because theater's not my thing. And I was like, that sounds super lame. And I got out <laughs> and I tried to walk out. Yeah, I was like, nerds. And he stopped me and he was like, no, that means you have to audition. Like, you're already here. And I was like, oh, wow. oh my God. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And everyone was like, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. And like, they were all, there's like a, you know, a group of like 20 kids like urging me to get on stage. And so <laughs> I was like mortified, dude, because I like, I did sports, you know, like I ran cross country and track. And yeah, exactly. And like, I was just like not into theater I just didn't think it was my thing and um I guess like I got on stage and just started reading from a piece of paper and uh he was like okay cool thank you um you're not gonna get a part in this play <laughs> but the next one they had um he was like come back for the next one and I was so stubborn that I was like I I was like I need some good feedback you know like I was like, this, yeah. I was like I can't be bad at something like I was just so stubborn and like <laughs> I was always like hungry you know 
and um, and I always just like wanted to be good at everything. And so I, uh, I showed up for the next one, did my little audition, and then they gave me a part in uh, in Dracula, <laughs> which was like the first play I ever did. Nice. So it was like the end of my sophomore year. I was 15 years old, and like that that changed my life, man. Like. Cause like all the kids that were like making fun of me for starting theater, like came to see the show, wow. like as a joke, oh, like they were like, Oh, we're going to go watch Gerardo on stage and like make fun of him. And, and it's going to be it. so funny. And then afterwards they were like, bro, <laughs> you got to keep doing this shit, bro. Damn. Like for real. And I ended up quitting everything. I ended up quitting track. I ended up quitting wow. cross country. I ended up quitting art classes. I ended up like all my grades like dropped. Like <laughs> I was at the theater every single day. Like, I would like do my rehearsals and then after rehearsals I would stay late and paint and like build the sets like and I didn't I would was not required to do that you know like I would just stay behind every day and like you know try to learn as much as I could about the theater and I caught up pretty quick because like by you know by the end of my senior year like I was in every single show and I kind of knew how to run the lights and Mm -hmm. like you know I was just in there all the time and I think especially coming from like that background of like the immigrant family like struggle it's like we're always worried about money, like things at home were just always tense. It was just always like stressful. And so I would stay at school basically from like 6 a.m. to like 7 or 8 p.m. because I was at the theater all freaking day. Um, and I tried to stay there as much as I could. And it was like, it became my home away from home. And it was like really like an escape, you know? Um, so yeah, when it came time to apply to college, I was like, uh, shit. I could do this thing that I really want to do and that's really going to make me happy or I could go to community college for two years and get my basics out of the way and then transfer to (laughs) the You know what I mean? And it's like, which, what's the choice? It's like I could do one where I, I already like was miserable in school, you know, and like if I just did more school, I knew I was going to be miserable or I could do the one thing that like really brought me joy and like at 17, you know, 17, 18, it's like, you're deciding your entire future yeah. you know like they're telling you like yeah. pick now what you're gonna do for the rest of your life you know figure it out and it's like i guess i just kind of froze and i waited till all the deadlines passed and mm. i didn't, didn't apply to any colleges except one right before the deadline and it was the american academy of dramatic arts in hollywood <laughs> and uh like a couple of weeks later, I got an envelope in the mail and they were like, you got in, congrats. And I was like, oh shit, I didn't think that was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, I got into a huge fight with my mom, but eventually like, she came to terms with the fact that I was like an adult. She was like, I can't stop you. Like, I really can't stop you. Um, but at the time I was lucky because my brother, who's a Marine, was stationed in San Diego. So that's where one oh, of the nice. biggest Marine bases is. And so he, she was like, I guess like, I'm okay with it because your brother will be nearby, you know, and like, Mm -hmm. if anything happens, he'll come see your ass. And I think especially with, you know, streaming services and like internet, like all of the things that we're consuming now, content creation is just like growing. Mm -hmm. And so when people say that it's not a viable career, I just like completely disagree Mm -hmm. because the job market is huge Mm -hmm. and it's blowing up, you know, like Netflix is creating their own movies. You know, Amazon is creating their own movies. Now you got Hulu originals. Like, Mm -hmm. and at the time that I was like just starting, none of that stuff was around. Like, like Netflix hadn't started creating like Netflix originals. You know, that wasn't a thing. Netflix was still like sending DVDs to people. Like, you know, like Amazon, like forget about it. Like none of that stuff was like, they weren't creating, they hadn't like jumped into that market. And so within the past like five years that I've been doing this, like it is completely blown up at yeah, all of these different studios. Yeah. And it's like, it's not just like actors that they need, you know, like mm-hmm. they need like people on the crew and like mm-hmm. on the set, they need people like setting up those lights, running those cameras, yeah. running the cables, yeah. bringing the food, like catering, you know, makeup artists, like that industry is like, still growing blowing up and so now we have like new areas that are like the new hollywood where like atlanta is like mm-hmm. a hub for netflix yeah right Rome said that. we have a yeah. huge like headquarters in atlanta now and it's like there's d- different cities growing like austin is huge with film and like it's starting to hit houston and like that's kind of where we're at now and and so you know that was the big worry was that like you're not going to find work you're not going to find jobs and it's like you can find jobs you can find work you just have to like keep going at it and like not like you just cannot stop Mm -hmm. no matter 
how much you fail, you know, because that was the thing with me was that like, it's not just like a huge success story. Like I failed so much over the years and I'm still at that point where I'm like recovering from some of my failures. But it's like, if you, if you just like keep going at it, there's, there's no way you're not going to find jobs or like find yourself with the right people. On your film. So since you are a kid of an immigrant and your story is kind of similar, was that on purpose? How you, you auditioned for that role? Did someone reach out to you and then it just seemed to fit with your story? Oh Lord. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's a little bit of both. So, so yeah, so I guess to pick up where I left off, like I went to acting school in Hollywood and then like, it was a complete failure. I mean, I was like, I was miserable. I, I loved going to school. I loved learning about acting. I loved going through that whole process and really like getting my ass kicked by these teachers because all my teachers were working actors, mm-hmm. you know, like they were like, oh, I just did like a Broadway show or like, oh, I was just on this like TV show. And it's like, that's amazing that I got to learn from all these like incredible mentors that like really were like working their asses off and still succeeding. And that was like a cool part of the experience. But then like, obviously I, come from a poor family you know and so like it was so hard to to stay afloat out there and so i was like hungry and like struggling to pay rent and like just never really being able to enjoy myself because i was so worried about you know surviving and so um eventually i just like decided to come home for the summer and then the summer turned into like the fall and then like you know (laughs) and then eventually i was like yeah i'm not going back like i'm not doing that and i was like you know, I came home to like an empty room. Like my mom had gotten rid of all my stuff. Like I painted the walls. She was like, oh, I was going to rent your room out. You know, like I thought you were going to be gone. Like, and so I just kind of had to start over. And, um, and so, yeah, I ended up deciding not to go back to school. I just got to work and like worked in construction like every day. And like, you know, just like tried to make money and survive. And, um, then eventually like, I did a couple like small theater shows here and there, like just to get myself back on stage. You know, I just want to know more about you or whatever. Like she was just so genuine about wanting to get to know me that we talked for like two hours and then I told her my whole story and I told her like what I had gone through. I told her like, you know, our whole come up and like, you know, my, my mom coming to this country and like all that stuff. And, um, and eventually she was like, okay, so do you want the part? And I was like, what? And she was like, do you want to play Matt? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, I don't know who Matt is, but yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, I got a part. Like, that's amazing. And I was like, I was like, Mom, I'm going to be in a movie. Like, because I was still living in my mom's house. Yeah. And I broke as hell, like, trying to survive. And uh, <laughs> so then, like, you know, she's like, okay, we start filming in October. We'll send you the schedule. Um, and I didn't realize until I got the schedule either that, like, it said my name on the schedule every day. And it was wow. Like, and out of the 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., 6 wow. a.m. to 6 p.m., 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., oh, mm. 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., like multiple days. And I was like, oh, wait, we're doing like overnight? And she was like, yeah, we're filming sundown to sun up. Like, oh, my wow. God. And I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, um, why am I on the schedule every day, but not everyone else is on the schedule every day? And she was like, Carardo, you're the main character. Like, oh, <laughs> you got the lead role. And I was like, what? And I freaked out. Like, I freaked out all over again. And I was yeah. going to be in a movie. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to take <laughs> off work. Like, I, gotta, <laughs> I was like, shit. So I took off, like, 12 days of work. Yeah. Um, and I was like, fire me if you want. I don't give a shit. Like, yeah. They were like, Carardo, you can't take 12 days off. You're a manager now. And I was like, I don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> fire me. Like, whatever. Figure it out, you know? Yeah. Um, and we got to work and we filmed like 12 hours a day if not like more like 16 hours a day sometimes like we filmed like in like the hot like houston heat you know Mm. what i mean like (laughs) and like there it was just like a life-changing experience and it was like the hardest thing i've ever done in my life like it was the hardest work i've ever done and like whenever i hear someone say like being an actor is easy i'm like oh no no like what you see like you know, is like a two minute, three uh-huh. minute scene, yeah. you know, or like maybe like a 10 second shot. You don't know what goes into like oh getting those God. scenes and getting those shots and like the repetition. Like there are like a couple shots where I'm riding my bike, like around my neighborhood in the movie. Like that took a whole day of me riding my bike Holy in crap. like the Houston heat, like just like miles and miles and miles <laughs> on that bike. 
And they were like, do it again, um, ride around this block. Now, can you ride a little faster? Can you keep up with the car? Like, you know what I mean? Because they had the camera on a car in front of me trying to get a shot of me riding my bike. And the car was like just accelerating and I had to try to keep up with the car. You know, and then there are scenes where like we swam in the swimming pool. So we had to like tread water swim. and like oh swim. God. And then they were like, okay, well, now we're going to do all that except underwater because now we have an underwater camera. So we'd have to go <laughs> underwater and like hold oh, our breath and try to act underwater. You know, like there's a kissing scene that happens underwater. <laughs> and we're like, try not to look dumb. Like, cause like <laughs> you know, because you know, we were like holding your breath. So you're like, wait, wait, wait. And like it's, it was just insane. It was an insane amount of work. And there's like chase scenes too, where we had to run through the woods. So it was like a triathlon. I was running, I was swimming, I was biking. And I was like, I was so exhausted, you know. And then they flipped the whole schedule, and it was like overnight shoots. And so like we would shoot, we would start at 6 p.m. when the sun went down. We had to shoot all the night scenes before the sun came up. And so like there were times where I would just like sleep on the floor. You know, like in between takes. Mm. So they'd be like, and cut. And I'd be like, and, be like, and action. And I'd be like, I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm like, <laughs> back, you know. And like, we'd film outside. And so I would like sleep on the ground outside, like on the street, you know. Like, I didn't care. I'd be like, oh just God. like so tired trying to do this. But then the second they said action, I was like, back up, mm. you know, and like all in because like, I just knew that everyone else wanted to be there. Everyone else was like, we're trying so hard to make a movie in Houston. It's not like a thing that happens. And like, everyone was just so dedicated. We had such an amazing cast. Like every single person there just like wanted to tell a story and like had their heart in it like 100%. And so that just like motivated me to keep doing it. And then like, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it was just like, it was so similar to my life, you know, cause it was about a poor kid growing up in Houston. which like, that was me. And like, and he did a bunch of dumb shit and like that was me too you know <laughs> and like he struggled with his relationship with his dad and like that was me too and it was like his dad worked in construction and so did mine you know mm-hmm. and like the bike that i ride in the movie like was my bike that i rode like all over town when i was a kid because like that was my escape you know and so that's such a symbol in the movie is like the bike is how he gets out of his house and like how he goes and like goes on all his adventures and shit and like um you know that's that's that was just something that i really connected on and so the whole movie was just like it was so perfect because it really took the time to find real people for the movie that like really understood what it was like to grow up in these situations and it made me realize like that these stories need to be told and nobody's telling them and nobody's going to tell them as good as we can you know because we actually lived it and we went through it and so it's like there's a demand for these movies like there's a demand for things like this to be made like when i you know and it's like it's just crazy because I put out that tweet like a couple weeks ago and I got like 200 new followers on Twitter and like all of almost all of them were young Latinos from Houston. Wow. And they were all like so enthusiastic about the movie. They wanted to support it. They were like, you know, retweeting and talking about how they were going to watch it. And I was like, you haven't even seen the movie and you're already like so behind it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it just like really made me realize like there is a huge demand for this kind of stuff, you know, like we, we take for granted like how valuable our stories are and it's like sometimes we're ashamed of it and we want to hide it and we want to be like no like i don't want to talk about the struggle i want to talk about how you know we were eating beans and rice every day like mm-hmm. no we don't want to talk about that but it's like if you don't talk about that then nobody's gonna realize that it's okay yeah. to keep going yeah. you know to, to like you know because some people see that as like a failure and they're yeah. like well i guess i'm done like i'm just gonna be stuck in this forever mm-hmm. but it's like if they see us really telling those stories and then talking about our successes like as much as we talk about our failures then it inspires people to do more, you know? And and that's all I want with the movie is for people to see it and be like, oh, like, these are all real kids from Houston. These are all kids that grew up poor and just wanted to, like, make a movie. And and I want people to realize that they can do it too, you know? Like, that's such a big deal for me, you know? I mean, I'm I'm just so happy that it's come this far and it took so long because, like, we filmed the movie in 2016. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 2020 now. Like, we're just now getting to a point where, like, it's hitting really hard and, like, um, it took a while to get done. Like we premiered in February of 2018 at the Houston Latino Film Festival, mm-hmm. you know? And like right there was like just a big part of the process too, where um, our director had just applied to like every film festival she could. And then out of nowhere, we got into like 30. And I was like, whoa, mm-hmm. that's like, that's, that's so wild, cool. you know? We got into like the Chicago Latino Film Festival, the downtown LA Latino Film Festival. Like we got into, um, Cinequest in San Marcos. We got into the San Diego Latino Film Festival. We got into the New York Latino Film Festival by HBO. 
Like we ended up winning. Amazing. That. Wow. Yeah. So it's like we started winning awards out of nowhere. But there was that two year gap where I was like, oh, we filmed a movie, but nothing's happening. Mm-hmm. And I was so worried that like my career wasn't going to go anywhere. And then out of nowhere, it just like, blew up and we won so many different awards and like won Best Feature Film and like all these different like um, film festivals like, all over the country. Um, I ended up winning Best Actor at one of them. Wow. And that was like crazy to me, you know, like I could not, I never thought in a million years like, that that was gonna happen, yeah. so you know? And then like, but the same thing happened where like after the film festivals ended and like we had this crazy experience, like it just kind of dropped off and everything got quiet and we were like, what's gonna happen? I think that's what happens yeah. when you're like in acting, it, there's a delay yeah, between yeah. that time period whenever it hits. For sure. Yeah. And that's the scary thing is like, no matter how quiet it gets, like you have to keep working, you know? Yeah. And you just have to, you just have to know when to like, just be self-disciplined and just be like you know maybe i'm not getting any roles right now but i still need to be like talking to people and keeping up with all my friends that like i met throughout you know this this run of like film festivals and stuff and like that's been super important um but yeah yeah i didn't know where i just i got the call i was like i was at work and they were like hey can you get on a call with the rest of the cast and i was like why why are we doing a big group call and the director was like well you'll see and i'm like (laughs) We all got on the call and she was like, uh, so Netflix picked us up. Um, oh, we're going to be on in February. And I was like, holy shit. I freaked out, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I paused the whole damn scene and I was like, oh my God, like that's crazy, you know? And it was all of the cast in the, in the, like in, in a group call together with the director. And she was talking to us about how she was like, yeah, like we had been struggling and it was just so quiet. And like we had, we had a sales agent. Like that's what you have to do when you get a movie. When you make a movie, you have to get a sales agent. Nobody will talk to you if you don't have a sales agent. Right. Right. And so we were talking to HBO because we had just won their film festival. Okay. We had won Best Feature Film, but HBO didn't want to buy it. Like HBO Latino didn't want to pick it up. And they have like, I understand like the business side of it where like they're only allowed to buy like three or four movies a year. Mm. Um, and so like, I was like, that's fine. You know, we're a little indie film. Like we're super low budget. Like maybe it's not the production value that they're looking for. I didn't take it personally. I'm like, you can't take any of this stuff personally. Right. But we were talking to Lionsgate and they didn't pick mm. the film up. We were talking to Sony and they didn't pick the film up either. But one of the guys from Sony was like, I really like your movie. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to hook you up with somebody and like get you a sales agent. And so we ended up getting that sales agent and they took our film to the American film market, AFM. And they ended up like just talking to someone from Netflix. Like they just met somebody through somebody else, talked to someone from Netflix, showed them the movie and... Literally, <laughs> my director didn't even get a call. She just got an email that was like, hey, can you send us the full like uh, cinema file? Like, can you send us like the, the movie? Because um, uh, Netflix is going to post it or whatever like soon. And <laughs> she was like, wait, what? And she was like, hold on. Does this mean we're going to be on Netflix? And she was like, yeah. Did nobody tell you? And she was like, no. And she was like, what? send the movie over. Like, damn, you know? Like, and that's crazy how all this stuff happens because there's so many moving parts. Like, there's so much shit that yeah. they don't even tell mm-hmm. us, you know? Like, they don't even tell us this stuff. And so, um, yeah, so she, she, she was just like, yeah, like, Netflix picked us up. Like, we are going to be on for six months initially. Mm-hmm. That's the, the initial, like, contract. Is it's going to be on from February to, like, six months later. I'm bad at math. Um, <laughs> And then if it does well, they'll renew it and it'll right. stay on longer. And so right. that is where like we all got kind of nervous and she was like, this is just going to be another big push. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be another big push where like you have to like get back on social media and yeah. start promoting again. I've never seen a movie like this. Mm. And I've met so many people that have said the same thing where they're like, I've never seen a movie yeah. like this. And you know, I people are not, I know, I can't wait not making watch. stuff like this, you know, like it's, it's all like comedies and stuff and it's like just like these bad stereotypes of us and like we're just so used to being like gangsters and like drug dealers or like you know like strippers and shit Mm -hmm. like that and it's like latinos can tell like really really good stories and it's like we have so many good stories it's just like people are not green lighting them people are not investing money into them but it's like what we're seeing right now is when you do invest money in it like that shit pays off because now we're on netflix and now Mm -hmm. we can tell people like for the next movie we want to do like look what we did and it's like that that's going to be such a big deal you know and i'm so excited man i'm so excited I'm so it's so excited crazy too. 
it's so wild. Like, I don't know what this is going to do for us. Like, we're all just kind of like, we're all so nervous, you know? It's just like this, ang- this good, it's like this anxiety, yeah, you know? Like, we're yeah. just like, what's going to happen, you know? Um, but yeah, it's like all the people we've met along the way are going to support us. Like, our city, man, like Houston is so supportive when, yeah. when things like this happen because things like this are so rare here, you mm-hmm. know, and there's so many stories here to be told that nobody's telling. And so mm-hmm. when you, when you lift something up and you're like, this was made in Houston yeah. by people from Houston, yep. it's set in Houston. Like we filmed it in Pasadena. And so like when we, we, we showed it at the AMC in Pasadena, which is like one of the biggest AMCs in the world. Wow. Yeah. Weirdly enough. I know. <laughs> yeah, in Pasadena, it's huge. It's a huge AMC. Um, like, People were like talking to us after the movie and they were like, that's my neighborhood. Like I know where that street, you know, like I saw like the background, like that's where I grew up, you know? And it's like so many people see themselves in the movie and that's what's so interesting to me. So I'm doing a couple things actually, and this is like really good timing, but this is a, a big reason why I'm kind of getting back into the theater scene in Houston. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause yeah. what I'm going to do is like, this is going to be included in my bio on the website, mm-hmm. on the programs, mm-hmm. on all the publications that we're mm-hmm. doing for the show that I'm doing now. Okay. So oh, every so. audience member that comes in is going to see me at the front, like front and center for this yeah. play. Yeah. So I'm playing the lead role in a new play, right? And of course. And so that's going to put me out there to like so many audience members in Houston. They're going to see that I'm doing this Netflix thing, like right. that my movies on Netflix, right? So that's like word of mouth right there. Like that's like alone is just going to be people in person meeting me, seeing me perform, and then being like, what else is this kid in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Netflix, you mm-hmm. know? And that's a huge thing because yeah. it's going to be in the Houston Chronicle. Houstonia is going to cover it like a lot of, there's going to get this like, this play that I'm doing is at a really big theater in Houston. It's a Main Street Theater. It's called Elliot, A Soldier's Fugue. And that also opens in February. Mm-hmm. So everything's going to hit in February at the same time. Good, good. And for the past couple months, I've been turning down plays. I've been turning down performances you know because i might want to just like focus on right. on work and i just want to chill and like you know give myself a break after doing all these film festivals mm-hmm. and like traveling every freaking week and then this one came up i heard it was you know coming in february they offered me the lead role and i was like absolutely i'm going to take this you know yeah so i'm getting press coverage for what i'm currently doing and that's going to benefit what i have done on netflix yeah and then also you know we're going to do a huge social media push we're going to do a lot of like um we're going to make a lot of content in terms of like, we're going to do interviews, you know, we're going to do like Q and A's and stuff for people that like really want to know about the movie and want to get to know the actors. Um, and, uh, we have a couple friends at like KHOU and like Telemundo. And so we're going to go on there and like do interviews and stuff on TV. And so like, this is just going to be like all of our, all of the skills that we've learned in this past year about marketing a movie that like wasn't even out yet you know, Mm. is going to hit so much harder when you can tell people they can like immediately go watch it, you know? And so, um, yeah, there's just going to be a lot of that kind of stuff where like all of our focus is going to go towards social media and we have a good team behind us that is like going to really help support us and open doors for us to get interviews with like other like various outlets. And so, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's our plan right there is to just push like really, really hard. Beautiful. Make everything about Netflix. <laughs> Where can people yeah. find you online? Um, so I'm on Instagram at uh, Jerry Velasquez. So it's G E R V E L A S Q U E Z, and then on Twitter, Gerardo for sure. Um, and uh, I have a website too. If you want to look at my photography, I do that a little bit, um, mm-hmm. and that's JerryVelasquez.com. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's basically it. I'm mostly on Instagram and Twitter, so I'm always open to like talking to people, like asking me questions and stuff. Like I'm always down to help people navigate the industry because I know it's hard. So yeah, hit me up. Yeah. <laughs>